What's up everybody? Today we are going to go through the basics of Final Cut Pro if you are interested in purchasing it or have it and don't really know how to use it. Um, this is going to be a place where you can kind of get started and get your grasp on uh, how Final Cut Pro works at the very basic level. So cue that intro. Okay, so I love Final Cut Pro. I used to use iMovie all the time before I had any kind of professional editing system. Um, I've had a Mac and I've just made all kinds of videos on iMovie. And the transition from iMovie to Final Cut Pro is super, super easy. The, the differences are that Final Cut Pro, there's just so much more to do with it. I'm gonna go through here the basics of what this looks like so it's not too intimidating when you get it or that you have it right now, you're just like, I have no idea what I'm doing with this thing. Let's dive in. Okay, so right now, as you can see, I really don't have anything rolling at this point. So uh, I have over in this section, uh, this tab right here are all of my events. So all these are called events. And these are all different videos that I've made with all the clips involved in each of them. So let's say you go to my gear. This was the final project. So if I were to double click on it, this was the project. This is what the project looked like. Um, all these little clips. These were all the clips that I used in the making of this project. So yeah, um, let's go back to the basics. So that is kind of where you can import it. So you would just go to file, import, media, um, and then you would import it and you would always want to choose optimized media when you do this. So let's say I wanted, yeah, you wanted to import Q intro. You would want to click, make sure this is um, checked uh, because it, yeah, it's optimized editing. So it's the, the perfect kind of file for Final Cut Pro to use. Let's say we wanted to bring this clip. This is the intro that you just saw. You really, all you have to do is drag it. And if you only wanted part of it, just drag that part of it. Um, so it, it's a pretty easy, simple way to, to get it into the timeline. Just drag it in there. Um, so then up in this section, there are spots for iTunes, photos, sound effects. Uh, if you want to use any of that, that, these are built into Final Cut Pro. Your photos come from your computer, your iTunes account. So that's where you would find your, your music and things like that. Or if you use Epidemic Sound or like another website, um, Epidemic Sound is what I use. You can import it directly into iMovie. You can go import, import media and import that audio file and it will actually go under your clips like in yeah, this one in introduction. So this was the audio clip. So I just went and I dragged it in there and there's your audio clip. And if you want to make the audio up, down, up, down, pretty simple. Um, same with this, up, down, up, down. So pretty easy to um, manipulate just the volume of your audio in a pretty quick way. So let's go back to the basics. And then here is where your titles and generators are. I don't really use generators a whole lot, but um, I can kind of show you what one looks like. So here, clouds. If you sped it up, it would kind of look more like this. You'd go flying through the clouds. So yeah, it, those are pretty cool because um, there's some movement in them, creates some life in it. And then there are your titles. So you have a long list, a lot more than you would have in iMovie or something like that. All different options for titles and uh, yeah, there's just a lot of ways you can manipulate them as well. So those are your kind of three sections over here. You're gonna do a lot with, with these, with your projects. Um, so let's say we clicked on this clip here. Now with a video, you kind of have all of these options over here. This is where you can really start to um, uh, manipulate your, your footage. So if opacity, how much can you see it? How much is it see-through? Um, the position, so if you wanna um, scale it, make it zoomed in more, you can do that. Um, cropping, distorting, so stabilization. So let's say you have a, a shot where you are tracking somebody through a room or something, but there's, there's a little bit of shake to it. Um, there's a stabilization system built into Final Cut Pro that isn't nearly as good as if you just 
were stable the first time, but um, it can really help uh, with the stabilization. So you can click on that and it'll analyze for a little bit and then you can start uh, choosing the method and things like that. So there's a way for you to do that, which is really cool. And you can do some of that down here too, transform, crop, distort, same things that are up here. But so if you were to click transform, you, can, you actually can do this and move it around and, and stuff like that. So, so the different options down here are bouncing your color, matching color, your color board. So if you go to color board, um, you can kind of do some color correction on it. So your exposure, this is the just the general exposure. Uh, so your shadows, up, down, up, midtones and your highlights. Uh, saturation, same sort of deal. You can kind of see There's your highlights there. Midtones. It's kind of hard to see because I, in the, this original video, I um, desaturated it a lot, so. Um, yeah, but, but that's a really handy tool as well. And then your color here. So if you want your highlights to have more blue in them or pink or red or maybe less red or less blue, which would get you more on the yellow green side. Yeah, so you can man manipulate those for color correction. Um, one of the ways I do color correction, so there, yep, that's the... Here's what we just did to it, but I'm gonna turn that off because I liked it the way that I had it. Um, another way you can go to color correction is, this is your effects tab. So you have your effects and your transitions. I'm sure you'll be using those a lot too. Um, so I have this thing that I downloaded called MLUT. So you would stick that on there. And what a, a LUT is kind of like a predetermined color correction. So you can get them online. So I have Peter McKinnon's Lutz, which I can put a link in the description to his channel, and he's just phenomenal. So yeah, check him out. He's got tons of awesome information and um, just really, really helpful. So I would go in and I would load a custom LUT that I had downloaded from my computer and I would choose it. And then that LUT would then automatically color correct. So if you wanted it to look more, uh, you know, black and white, if you wanted it, you know, more orange colors or just different feels, it's like an all encompassing kind of color correction that it does to give you a certain feel for whatever video that you want. So I think LUTs are super helpful so you're not going into every clip and trying to tweak it um, from scratch. So at least if you don't like the LUT that you're using totally in general, th th that's okay because you can go and just tweak a little bit instead of just trying to tweak every single one every time and it's really hard to get just the right coloring that you want. There's also a, an, a library from MLUT that I have used in the past as well. So um, let's say I wanted to use it on railroad and river. Um, let's go down here. Okay, I'm gonna, this is kinda how you drag it, make it smaller on your timeline. So we're going to put the MLUT onto my clip. I'm going to load a custom LUT. This is the 2012 Mac, so my computer's feeling kind of slow, I think. It's been a good five years. And here it is. So I'm going to choose Kodak Killer, which is one of his LUTs. All right, so if you can see the difference here, I have it at 100%. So let's say I turned it off. That's, that's what it's doing to, to the image. So I could bring that down if I, to zero, to 50, to 60, however I really like it. And then I can start changing exposure and saturation and things like that, um, depending on how I like the image um, and, and how, how strong I want it to be. So uh, I, I really liked it at 100%, to be completely honest. I think it gave it a really cool look. So you can change different things in there. Um, yeah, so that's that's a really cool tool for, for color correction. All right, so we're in the effects tab. So there are all these different effects, audio and video, um, different color effects, masks. Yeah, th th there's just a ton of different stuff that you can use and you can play with that and see what you like. But th there's just an extensive collection of, of effects 
and then your different transitions that you could use in between. So you can just take it, oops. So you can just take like a cross dissolve and drag it out. So you want to dissolve nicely out like that. That is a, um, a great way to do that. So you can really just, there's a lot of just uh, click and drag over in the system, which I think is super, super helpful. Um, it just makes things really, really easy and simple. So um, those are your effects tab and your transition tab. And uh, we've looked up kind of at the video tab up here. So if we wanted to change the audio, there are different audio effects. So if the audio that you get isn't exactly prime, there's different effects. Hum removal, noise removal, loudness. Obviously it's better to get good audio right off the bat, but um, you can make minor changes and uh, tweak things minorly without the quality being affected too much in the system. Yep, and then there's this tab down here. If you wanted to um, slow down your footage or speed up your footage, this would be the place to do it. So if I'm shooting at 60 frames per second and I want to uh, bring it down to 50% to make it just buttery, smooth, slow motion, like I would just click that on the clip and it would make it 50%. And then another tool is B for blade. So if you want to cut B, A, if you just want to go back to using your selection tool and you can see these tools here. These are the different shortcuts. Yeah, so it's a pretty simple system, really easy to use. Like if you want to create a simple video right off the bat, just to get started and maybe look at your levels and try a color correction on some different clips, uh, I think uh, this would be a great one to try. It's not super complicated. You have your basic areas. So you have your events and projects right here. You have uh, your, your music and photos and sound effects here. And then here you have your titles and generators. So at the beginning of the video, you want to bring this down. So with your titles, yeah, you could go in and say, uh, Jordan's video. And then you can change the font, the size, the alignment, the line spacing, outline, all of that. So very simple. So very easy to use. So that's where your titles and your generators are. Once again, generators, things with movement in them and, and different designs. And then over here you have like your, your video settings and also your audio settings in this area. So you can change, you can do your color correction over here in your effects. So you would go down here for color correction, going to the color board. Here you could transform and crop and distort. Here you would do your duration or if you want slow motion or rewinding or different kind of, um, the, the, those kind of effects. Um, if you wanted to do an effect like a color correction or using a LUT, or any of those different things. You just go in here and drag them on. And then you have your effects, or you have your transition tab, where you just take and drag. Super, super simple, super easy to get started. There are different tips and tricks with all these different things to do cool things on your timeline, but that's the basic layout of Final Cut Pro. And I just think it is very simple, very easy to use. There aren't a bunch of different bins you need to go into, or yeah, a bunch of different tabs. It's all right here, right in front of you. Easy to click on, click off. It's just a matter of practicing them and getting used to where everything is and how to use it. Yeah, so that's just the basics of Final Cut Pro. If you haven't really been exposed to it before or if you have been and you just don't really know what's going on there, that is just kind of a broad, broad, broad overview. Uh, there could be millions of videos out there on specific ways to do certain things. So I might jump on that chip, I might not, we'll see. but. And that is the, the basic kind of deal if you are interested in videography and video editing uh, and things like that. So I hope it was a little bit helpful, gave you kind of an idea of what this, this system looks like. I hope you all have a very happy 4th of July and we will see you next time.